Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today we got something really interesting. We've been doing a series on a player from every team. But today we're going to do a grading series where we grade each team's forwards. But this is the cool part. On my show, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, as you see there in the, uh, right there, down there. See it? Uh, I, what I did was, it's an interactive show. So I brought this up with everybody and all of us put in our grades for each team. And then we averaged it out and came out with a grade. I'll, in the video, I'll tell you what my grade was and how it related to what everybody else said. But you can come do that anytime you want at the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. Just hit the subscribe button. And uh, you can, if you hit the subscribe button, every day I put out a, uh, like, FYI of when I'll be on live. And uh, you can come on and, and be part of the live. Um, also, this is part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, www.steelflyers.com. Go check that out if you like all four major North American sports and teams that are involved in that because we do all of it, all of it, and we're getting new creators every day. Just like this, vloggers, bloggers, uh, writers, everything. It's awesome. Go check it out. Okay, let's start with our gradings. And we're going to be starting with, we're going to go in alphabetical order. I thought I would try that out. Is this, okay. Okay. Here we go. We start off with the Anaheim Ducks. And uh, the grade for this was D+. Plus. I had a D. Uh, most people were right around there. Uh, but it ended up being D+. Plus. It's pretty tough here for uh, Anaheim. Um, when Lunders, Isaac Lunderstrom, really like him, good young kid, growing, becoming a pretty good two-way winger. Problem is he's only 21 years old, and you see here on Cap for Friendly, hopefully you can see it. Can you see it? Yeah, you see here on Cap Friendly that he is their top-line left winger. And then you have old man Getzlaff, <laughs> 36 years old, playing number one center. Maybe taken over by Trevor Zegras, who's only 20 years old. And, you know, Max Jones could take the next step, Sam Steele. But there's too many question marks here for this lineup to give them higher than that. In fact, D-plus, even looking at it, might be a little high. Tell me what you think, Anaheim fans or all other people fans. What would your grade be for them? Next, Eric. Whoops, here we go. Uh, Arizona Coyotes. And yeah. <laughs> they traded everybody away. In this, in the uh, cap friendly, they still have Phil Kessel on the right side here. Apparently, he's asked to be traded, and they it's pretty likely before training or before uh, the regular season starts, he'll be moved as well. And if you move him from there, I don't know what you're going to get in return. But the fact of the matter is you have Christian Dvorak, who is probably better suited for a second-line center role than a first. Um, and Nick Schmaltz, sort of the same, maybe. It's not really the best second-line center you want. And Lawson Crow should not be on a second line. Christian Fisher should not be on a second line. This is really poop -dy. We had it as an F, and everybody picked it as an F. Sorry, Arizona fans, but I'm pretty sure you already know this. We're not surprising you or hurting your feelings all that much here, I'm sure. Next, Boston Bruins, and uh, pretty fantastic roster apart from the center position as far as forwards are concerned. And remember, this is also not just how much offense they have. It's just forwards in general. Gonna, um, you got the top line, which is still going to crush, I'm sure. But Charlie Coyle up the middle, or maybe you can put Halla in there, or Nick Foligno. Not ideal second-line centers. I think they're going to have to solve that, maybe, but I think they'll probably roll with it to see if it works out okay, at least for the regular season. 
But besides that, it's pretty stacked. I really love the pickup of Noshik. I like the pickup of Eric Halla. Uh, and um, Felino as well. All fantastic pickups. Much more depth than they had last year that way. But because they don't have the second line center, I'm going to give them a B plus. Uh, next, or sorry, we gave them a B plus. What did I give them? I gave them a B plus. Everybody in the land gave them a B plus. Uh, next, uh, Buffalo Sabers. Yes, we we were all over the place. Remember, this was from my show. Everybody did this on the show. Uh, contributed to this, and you can do this as well. We all voted and came up with a letter from A to F. Uh, so this is without Jack Eichel in there. With Jack, Jack Eichel won't be playing for the Sabres, let's face it. I think Casey Middlestad's going to be better than people think. Uh, I think this whole forward group and roster is going to be better than people think. I don't think it's a playoff team. But I really like Granado there in uh, that Granado, what he did with the team in the second half last year. I think that'll continue. However, it's just too green, this lineup. I mean, middle stats, only 22 still. Um, and uh, Tage Thompson, 23. These are guys that are going to be playing huge roles this year as we see it right now. I mean, Victor Olofsson is a veteran, and then Jeff Skinner. We know all about Jeff Skinner. So um, pretty sparse and green. I, we couldn't do better than a D, but we actually gave a D for them. And most of the people in my show that voted for this really liked what Granado did last year, and, and probably a little higher than really what you're seeing on paper. So Sabres fans, what do you think? What – uh, grade would you give your team or anybody out there? Next, we have the Calgary Flames, and um, not too many people in the group that voted for this liked uh, their second line center in Sean Manahan, Monahan. That was pretty much the issue here in mine as well. Um, most of most like the Coleman move. Uh, I think you could see maybe better with Goudreau, Lindholm, and Kachuk um, changing the energy of this team with some of the moves that they made. But I honestly just don't see it being very good. Um, I, you still got a pretty poor-looking fourth line in Lucic, Freeze, and Ricci. Um, Mangio Pani's a beast. What do they got him on the third line for? I know I like Blake Coleman, and maybe they want to give him some chance on the offense, but... Uh, I would rather them switch him to the right side and play him with Backlund um, and maybe Coleman to the right side and put Mangiopani on the left side with Monaghan. But the big problem is really Monaghan. He's got to step it up huge. So for that reason, we went C- minus on the Calgary for forwards. Next, uh, Canes. And I was really surprised by this. I actually was a little higher than the uh, than the consensus from my from my live, uh, the people from my live. Um, they went B. Uh, Svechnikov, Aho, Teravainen. To me, that's A. Niederreiter, Trocek, Nietzsche for a second line is A. Uh, Mart, I, I see an A. Line up here, maybe a little weak in the fourth line, but not much. I really like this lineup. I had an A, but the consensus from everybody from the live, and that's how we did this, turned out to be a B. And uh, I didn't really get much understanding as to why that would be. Um, they had a tr little trouble scoring. I think that was more systems related. But on paper, to me, this is an A. Carolina fans, tell me what you think. Uh, do you think that B is low? Um, we had uh, one person give it a C, uh, C and C plus, which I never really got much of an explanation for. Maybe you can do it. Maybe you guys see a C in here. I don't know. Uh, next, Chicago Blackhawks. And uh, we were all over the place here, uh, basically with a lot of question marks. 
how's Tyler Johnson going to fit in with Chicago? He ha- he's been putting up some low scoring years in Tampa Bay. Uh, however, I think that was more because he was buried, and I personally gave it an upgrade for their roster. I liked it. I think the main problem here wasn't just it wasn't about offense; it was about their lower lines. Uh, Dylan Strom, Borgstrom, and Nylander is a pretty offense related third line. It's like they don't really have a shutdown line here. If the their shutdown line is probably their top, like they don't really have one. And I think that's what really got the negative more of the lower uh, gradings on here. Even their fourth line of Hagel, uh, Hagel, which I really like, love Hagel. I think he probably should be up higher. I think he'll take out Dylan Strom, honestly. Godet and Ryan Carpenter isn't really what you would call the classic fourth line either. But Chicago plays a high offensive octane game. I actually gave them a B, but the overall census turned out to be a B- minus for the Hawks. So tell me what Hawks fans and everybody, what you think about that. Um... Colorado Avalanche. Uh, did I hit? Yeah, I did. Colorado Avalanche. Um, this was pretty much a consensus all across the board. Big A. Now, I didn't give an A plus here either. Um, there were some people that gave an A plus. There was somebody that was as low as a B. And uh, I found that odd. These are very knowledgeable fans, actually. If you come on to my live, we have very knowledgeable hockey people there. Um, we do picks uh, during the regular season, and they nail them pretty good. They know a lot about hockey. But I think it's Kadri. I think is, people are a little concerned about his downturn overall. He sort of seems like he's slipping already at 30 years old. Maybe that's where they came in. I still saw an A here because, of course, that top line is so beastly. Uh I didn't mind. I still think the second line is pretty good, and I love Valerie Nichushkin. I think Tyson Jost will step up a bit more this year. Um, Darren Helm, eh, and I think Newhook will probably take out. I wouldn't even doubt if Newhook took took out Caudry. So I'm not sure what people were seeing with the lower marks, but we had it as an A. Uh, next, the. Columbus Blue Jackets, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, really took a hit this year, the Columbus Blue Jackets, didn't they? Uh, lose, the, losing player after player. Uh, Breezeball, Lion A didn't play well last year coming over after, not Breezeball, after Dubois got traded. Um, you're going to have to end up having Gustav Nyquist as, a left, as your second line left winger or Alexander Tessier. He may take that spot at 21 years old. Uh, I wouldn't doubt it. Gustav hasn't played in a year. He didn't play all year last year. So I don't think huge minutes are in the offing for them right away. They did make some nice moves like bringing in uh, Sean Corrali. But overall, this is a fairly thin forward group. Um, and there's just no getting around it. I We had him as a D-. minus. Uh, I think I gave it a D-. Uh, Mostly because I think Lion is going to do a lot better in this this year. Um, and I think they're going to probably add here. However, I can't really put that mark on that. Um, but Jack Rosovich as your number one, it, it was very hard to give a really good mark here. I did like the pickup of Jacob Borchek. He'll be, I miss, Cap Friendly has him as a second line right winger. I'd be playing him with Lion A to feed him the puck. He's a wonderful passer. But overall, I can't see uh, too much in this top 12. Uh, maybe there could be some players that might like break out here and play that we don't see. But what did we see from here? Even Igor Shinnikov on the roster now. Pretty thin. So D- minus for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, next, Dallas Stars. Um now, this one was really all over the board. We had some people at a C plus. I think that was basically because Dallas had problems scoring last year. But I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that Sagan was injured. Um, 
They had a lot of injuries last year. It was a tough year all around for Dallas. They went through the COVID stuff and all of that kind of stuff. So um, I think I gave it, I gave them a B. And I almost wanted to give them a B plus. I was right on the edge of that. I just think the overall roster is not, their philosophy isn't really about scoring either. And they're very good defensively. Um, even though I'm not big on Dennis Guriana on the third line, they have some odd players there where um, they could be placed somewhere else. It's kind of a mishmash lineup, but it works. And I think Jason Robertson is going to be even better next year. Ropo Hints is going to be better next year. I, I, I like it as a B, but we gave it a B minus. So tell me what you think they're Dallas Stars fans or other fans. What is your uh, grade for the Dallas forwards? Next, Detroit Red Wings. And um, I think they're going to be better this year, for sure. Uh, Jacob Brana getting a full year there in Detroit, I think is going to be awesome. Finally, he gets an opportunity to be kind of the guy on, on a top line after playing down in the lineup in Washington when he really shouldn't be. Um, I think with him, Larkin, and Bertuzzi being back from injury, that's a pretty solid line. Fabry, Suter, and Zadina, it's iffy. Zadina is set up for a breakout, though. 21 years old, he got 19 points in 49 games. Uh, that's pretty darn good for a 21-year-old to be able to put up those kind of points. I, 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 I'm sure it's, there's going to be an upgrade there. Pia Suter did well in Chicago. Great two-way player. Um, awesome that they picked him up the way they were. Now the bot, the problem where it starts to fall apart with me is, is the bottom uh, nine. Nemeshnikov, Sneakoff, Rasmussen, and Sam Gagne. I would put Erne there honestly. Uh, leaves a lot to be desired. Rasmus, Michael Rasmussen. Um, maybe it's his year. He's going to be good. Uh, he's getting better all the time. He got a nice little new contract. But still fairly green, and Nemeshnikov is just not is just not a third line guy. He's got to play in your top six. If he's not, he's not really all that effective. Um, and Giovanni Smith probably gets a good chance to fill that fourth line role. Joseph Valino is a question mark at twenty one years old. It's a uh, it's a pretty green lineup still. So we gave it them a C minus though, which is pretty impressive considering how green they are. Um, I gave them right on that, a C minus. Uh, it's, it's a look-see. Let's see. Let's see what happens here with this lineup. So Detroit Red Wings fans, what do you give your team? There was one person that gave uh, a D minus. I think that was the lowest one. Um, next, the Edmonton Oilers. And uh, we, had, we, we had some all over the board here too. But most of them were fairly high. I mean, there's not much you can say about that top nine with McDavid. Hyman, McDavid, and Pooley Harvey. I had Pooley Harvey as a breakout player this year. Uh, I, I, gave them a, I gave them a B plus, And the consensus in my live from all the people that voted turns out to be a B plus as well. Nugent Hopkins is a great two-way winger with dry saddle. They play excellent together. Question mark with Yamamoto, is he going to be able to pull it up a little bit? He had a kind of a poor year, but he's only 22. He's got a lot of room to improve yet. Uh, and he, he, he's a hard worker. So um, Then uh, picking up Fogel for, with Turris and Cassian, I'm not a fan. Fogel will help out defensively there, but he's got iron mitts. And we're going to see about Turris. Turris apparently worked the gym like crazy. They convinced him to work the gym. If that guy can get in shape and get strong again, he let himself go a bit, you never know. This might actually not be too bad. But really, the top six, the top six is what gives this team all its meat and the B-plus that we gave it. Tell us, Oilers fans, what kind of a vote grade would you give the forwards? Uh, Florida Panthers... Um, I was kind of surprised. I gave them an A. 
I give them an A. But the overall census for the Panthers actually turned out to be a B. And I'm not sure why. Unless you think Verhage's going to slip back. Uh, I think Sam Reinhardt's going to be absolutely beastly in Florida. Really awesome in Florida. I kind of hope they play him on, in up the middle with Huberto, to tell you the honest truth. Huberto's passing for Reinhardt would be insane. I could actually see him scoring 50 goals. And, um, you know, solid top six with Sam Bennett pick up last, last year. Barkoff is a beast. Like, I really don't understand why there were some lower uh, offerings here in the, like, C+, plus even, when as low as C+. Plus. I like Jake uh, Frank Vetrano. About the only thing I could say is maybe a little trouble defensively when you get into Vetrano on the third line, uh, but not too bad. Owen Tippett could take out Declare's spot easy. I like it. I like this lineup. What do you think, Florida fans, or anybody else out there? What kind of grade would you give Florida? Um, like I said, we ended up being a B through the consensus, but I had him as an A. Next, LA Kings. Uh, yeah, it, this one was kind of all over, too. There's a lot of question marks. Uh, of course, you have Kopitar is fantastic. Uh, I, Alex I follow. I'm not really a huge fan of overall as a, as a, as a, especially on a top line winger. He's more of a second line guy and not really a top end one at that. Uh, Dustin Brown. I lo- I still love the guy. I still love him. I, I he's got 31 points in 49 games. I don't know what that guy's got to do. He's heart and soul guy. He puts up points. He gets a lot of flack. Got his captaincy taken away. But Kempe, Dano, and Arvidsson, it's kind of a third line. It's almost like they don't have a second line. You still see problems possibly scoring in L.A. Hence, the consensus was C+. I actually had him as a B. I like Filardi a lot. And um, I think Turcotte and or Byfield is going to mix in here as well. And bring this team into a much better looking team. I, I think they could make the playoffs this year. I really, really do. Um, Athens to see you, you don't really want. I'd, I'd switch Athens to see you and Kempe. I'd rather see Kempe on the third line with Velarde and uh, Trevor Moore. I'd really rather see Turcotte be able to crush it and Velarde move over to the left side. That's what I'd like to see. But. The consensus was a C plus for the Kings. Next, uh, Minnesota Wild. And this surprised the crap out of me, okay? I gave them uh I gave them a B plus still. You still got you still have Kaprizov. Kaprizov is insane. I love Greenway. I like Fiala. They gotta find a better spot for him. Maybe put him on the right side. Uh, somewhere to get him in the top six. You could bring Felino down. He can play all over the, your lineup. I love Felino. Erickson Eck as your number one on paper doesn't look great, but watch out for him this year, I think. I think he's going to solidify himself as a number one this year. Uh, but I'm taking, uh, I, I said a B, but it turned out being a C plus. It just doesn't sound right to me. Tell me, Minnesota fans, what does C-plus seem low to you? Nico Sturm is probably going to take the next step. I think why there were some lower marks for Minnesota is there is a lot of question marks whether players are going to take the next step. But I personally, I personally like the lineup still. Uh, I don't know about Kyle Rao. They could add more for their fourth line, but I like it. Next. Montreal Canadiens. Uh, this was, I gave them a higher mark than consensus did too here. I just love that top line. Tyler Toffoli, Suzuki, and Caulfield. I think that line is going to crush. Yes, it's very green, but sometimes it doesn't matter. Sometimes when you got that kind of talent like Suzuki and Caulfield and the way Toffoli can shoot, it don't matter. I just love that line. I'm not as big on Hoffman, though. 
Uh, you got to play him in that top six spot, but you have Kokanemi and Gallagher to make up for his very weak defense. Uh, he mostly scores on the power play. He doesn't really get much five on five either. So I also, I think it's because I have a soft spot for Drouin. I gave a B here. I, I just, I have a feeling he's, he's got himself figured and he's going to come back strong. Probably take Hoffman's spot. Uh, I'm not big on Evans up the middle. I'm not big on Josh Anderson, period, as a player, to tell you the honest truth. Yeah, he had some good scoring stats last year, but a lot of it was a high shooting percentage. So I can't say I'm – I honestly, I'm not huge on him. I prefer Lekkinen if you can get him on the right side there and bring Josh Anderson to the fourth line. I gave it a B. I just pulled that, I think, because that top line is so special. But the consensus turned out to be a C plus for Montreal. We had one person on a D plus, and that was on my live that we did. Uh, that's how we came to these totals. Next, Nashville Predators. Um, we all were almost exactly between C and D. Um, they did really well with what they had coach last year. You got to give Heinz credit. They didn't have much on that roster. They had injuries and they ended up being able to, uh, to uh, make it into the playoffs and play extremely well down the stretch. But you need to see some big things from Ryan Johansson. And I don't think that's going to happen now at 29 years old. Matt Duchesne too. Like they, they've got to see some improvement in these areas for me to give them a high end mark. It ended up being a C minus, and that's about where I would have it right now. I just, I it, there's not enough anything really. It's very vanilla, and vanilla, vanilla means average. It's a very average top uh, forward group. Next, New Jersey Devils. Um, what did we get for the Devils? B minus. I I was a little higher here. I gave him a B. And I almost wanted to give them a B plus because I really think these kids are going to knock it out of the park. Kalkinen, huge, Sharon Govich, Zaka, Heischer, Brat. I don't think there's going to be a step down from all of them. I think this lineup could be absolutely fantastic next year, actually. But I have a tendency to overrate young players and where they're going to be. Uh, when I see how good they are likely going to be, I have a tendency to get impatient with that. Miles Wood, I mean... This lineup is going to be fantastic. It's just a question of when it will actually hit its stride. But I gave it a B. Overall consensus in the live that I do uh, five days a week. If you subscribe, you'll be able to be part of it and do this sort of thing and have your vote in there was a B minus for the Devils. So tell me, Devils fans, what you think about that. Uh, New York Islanders. Um, I don't, it's not finished yet. That's the thing. Everybody almost to a man gave them a B plus. And uh, just their overall roster, the, their, that, that awesome fourth line of Martin, if they get Zizekas back, which I imagine they will. Uh, Johnston, Pajo, even with Panic in there. But the top six just can do everything. Wallstrom, Nelson, Beauvillier, Lee, Barzell, Bailey, very responsible. Yes, there's the system, but these guys do play fantastic. I think most of us know that there's going to be some additions here. I think Palmieri and being one, and if you throw in him, there, him in there, you even got close to an A roster here. What do you guys think, Islanders fans? Do you like? Do you, do you go as high as we do with the B plus? Uh, Rangers. Um, Again, a lot of this is based on what we projection, what the projection is going to be for this team. Um, if everything hits the way it's supposed to and there's improvement from every player like there should be, especially their young players like Heidel, uh, Lafreniere looked like a beast in the second half last year. I'm sure he's going to be fantastic this year. Kako, time for uh, for him to step up. But 20 years old, people like giving up on Kako. 17 points in 48 games as a 20-year-old? 
there ain't nothing wrong with that at all. And I'm sure he's going to keep on getting better. So we gave a B plus to this crew, um, bringing in Barkley Goudros and Blaze, uh, Samuel Blaze, uh, Reeves to play every once in a while uh, to add that grit. Uh, it's a very balanced lineup. I like it. I think they're going to do a fantastic. I think they could do big things this year. Um, might look a lot more like an AA plus by the end of the year for sure. Uh, Senators. Senators, we gave, uh, it was all about the same. There was one guy who put a D in there. I think there was a couple, there was a one B, but mostly right around what we put them at. And that's a C. Love the top six. Uh, I love Drake Batherson. I had, I had a C plus by the way, my personal one, but the consensus was a C. Um, love that top line. Uh, Stutzla, it's just Colin White hasn't been able to put it together as a, as an Ottawa Senator for what they're paying him, especially. Uh, and it's not really, I think Shane Pinto will take that spot, but there's a lot of question marks because of youth, but overall this lineup has so much potential. Uh, it's almost impossible to give them less than a C. Um, and I think by the end of the year, that's probably going to look pretty low. Tell me what, Tell me what you say, Ottawa fans. What do you give your top forwards for A, from A to F? Uh, Philadelphia Flyers. I had this a lot higher than everybody else. I am a Flyers fan. Maybe it's that. But I think this lineup had a down year. Uh, they had a lot of players that were injured last year especially like Oscar Lindblom the year before that, I mean. And um, it made it pretty tough on the veterans to make up their, take up the uh, gap for how the younger players weren't, weren't filling it in. Um, they were maybe being asked to do too much. Uh, I like the move to get Atkinson. I think it worked well for both teams in that trade. Uh, and I think he'll score a lot more here in Philadelphia. I gave it a B, but actually the consensus gave it a C minus. And I can understand that because they didn't score very much last year. They had a tough time scoring. Their defense wasn't that great last year, which contributed to that. But it was a mess of a year. I just think they're going to be a lot better this year. I gave them a B, but consensus was a C minus. So you can tell there was some Ds in there and all that. So... Philadelphia Flyers fans, what do you think? Um, I think Hayes is going to have a better year. Couturier uh, will still crush it. Konechny had a bit of a down year. I think it'll be I, – I just think the whole – everything's – and better uh, defense adds to your forwards, although that was included in here. So it was – we were just talking about forwards. Next, the Penguins. And uh, funny thing, now I went lower than consensus here. Consensus was a B for the Penguins. And although I love Gunsel, Crosby, and Rust, until I can see Malkin not be injured, I'm a little, like I'm not a big Zucker guy. Kasperi Kapanen did well. I like the addition of Brock McGinn, and Car Jeff Carter certainly played well when he came over. But then Danton Heinen has not been able to put it together. Uh, Aston Reese is, is a great analytics guy, and I do like Teddy Bluger. It just seems very Z, C plus -ish to me. C plus to me, somewhere around there. I, I need to see more from the lower lines, but they get it done. That's the problem. That's the thing. They get it done. On paper, I'm like C plus-ish. Plus -ish. Say that a million times. Uh, but the consensus was a B, a B for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Tell me what you think they're Pittsburgh Penguins fans about that. Uh, San Jose Sharks, uh, the consensus after Evander Kane no longer being part of the equation. You're going to have to play guys like John Leonard Hard, Matt Nieto, uh, I did like the pickup of Benino. That will bring a lot of important veteran leadership to that room. 
However, overall, they uh, uh, with Kane not being there, we couldn't go higher than a D for the Sharks' offense. So hopefully, they prove us wrong. I don't know. There's something about the San Jose Sharks that makes me root for them. I really want to see them do well. I think it's maybe it's because it's in San Jose, and I really like those markets to do well. But um, as it stands, Couture had a down year. You know, Hurdle did well. There's a bar Banoff is a question mark on the left side, although he did play really well after he came over from Toronto. It's just not a forward roster that lights it up too much. I had it a little higher. I had it as I had I had them as a C, but there's a lot of people that put them really low. So um, it ended up being a D. San Jose Sharks. Next, the Seattle's. Uh, whoops, Seattle which got a C and a lot of that I think has to do with the fact that there was a lot of question marks here with Seattle on how this is all going to look as a team. Um, I, uh, I like Schwartz. Wenberg as the number one center is just, I mean, I know Gord will eventually be there, but it's not looking pretty even with Gord there. Although, Again, there's a question mark. He was down in the lineup. Is he going to be able to up his game now as a number one? Is Eberle going to be able to put up the same point production when he doesn't have a guy like Barzal to play in the middle with him? Or, uh, you know, Jared McCann, I think, has the potential to have really good point production for a team, but he's moved around an awful lot. And Cal Yarncroft on the second line center, that's asking a bigger role. A lot of these players are just getting bigger roles than they had before, which leaves you with a lot of question marks. So we kind of went with a C because we want to see how it's going to be. See how I did that? What do you guys think, Seattle? What do you think of your forwards? There's a lot of guys that had Ds and stuff like that. I just think Mason I, Mason Appleton is really good. He could blow up. Uh, Brandon Tana, like their third lines are really good. A fourth line is not too bad of Bastion, Blackwell, and Johansson. I think their overall depth is, is pretty good. for all, uh, So I think I had a C plus actually, but the consensus was a C. Uh, Blues. Uh, now this was odd. They went, uh, okay, I, I had the Blues as a, as a B minus. And... Um, the overall consensus, there's a lot of people that are not fond of this roster. Uh, maybe because Tarasenko is not going to be in it, but Tarasenko wasn't in it last year and they did go out and get Pavel Buknevich. Um, I think the big question might be with, is Robert Thomas going to step up and be what they always wanted him to be? Same as Jordan Cairo. Um, I think that's really, and they don't really have that big Big guy. Joe O'Reilly, I mean, O'Reilly should probably be viewed as that. Selkie trophy winner that gets a point a game. But a lot of times he kind of does, kind of is a forgotten man. Um, and the depth is going to take a hit. The depth has really taken a hit. So I had a B minus, but the overall consensus was a C minus for the Blues. So. What do you guys think, St. Louis Blues fans? C-minus sound fair for your crew of forwards there? Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, there, it, the consensus was an A. I still had an A-plus for this group. Uh, I know they lost some pretty good pieces in Gord. Um, and who else did they lose? It was really just Gord, right? Oh, and Johnson. But I think that Matthew Joseph will pick that up. Colton Ross looked great last year. I don't think they lose that much. I still had it as an A+. You still got the best winger in the game. Uh, Point is an amazing center. And, of course, Palat, Kaloran, Sorelli, Stamkos. Nothing wrong with that. I think losing a few pieces didn't really change things too much for this team, honestly. I, I still th give it an A+. But... There were some guys they had in the B plus range, and and Tampa Bay ended up getting an A. Tell me what you think, Tampa Bay. 
Do you think they deserve to get a little lower this year after all the moves that they make? I don't see it, but maybe you do. Uh, next, we have the, the Leafs, and it's so hard to grade this, tam- this Leafs team because the first line is absolutely insane. Nylander, Matthews, Marner, if they do it that way. I have a feeling they're going to try Michael Bunting up there and then have Nylander with Tavares and Makaya. That would be a lot better to me if they were to do something like that, give Bunting a shot. Um, The lower lines, though, I'm not big on Simmons up there in the third line. I'd almost rather play Spezza uh, in limited minutes. And David Kampf, there's not much offense in that dude to be playing on your third line. He is pretty good defensively, but... It's not a stellar bottom six. It really isn't. And uh, that's really the problem I have with this roster. However, I I did give it a B, but the consensus was B minus for the forwards. Uh, That could be very conversational there, Toronto fans. What do you guys think about that? B minus for the forwards. Uh, Next, Vancouver Canucks. And... The consensus was a B, and I get that. I I, I gave it a B. I, I gave them a B plus, bordering on an A. I just love that J T. Miller, Pedersen, Besser line, uh, and Pearson, Horvat, and Garland. I think is going to be fantastic too. Uh, yeah, you know what? I should have given them an A. I think I did. Maybe I did give them an A. I I like their whole lineup of. I think Pod Colson's going to be fantastic. Maybe a bit of a question mark there, but I love Mills Hoglin and Dickinson was fantastic in in Dallas. So, but the overall consensus was a B, probably because Vancouver had trouble scoring last year. But that was through a lot of different reasons: tough schedule, COVID, all of that kind of stuff like that. It was a brutal year for Vancouver. I think they're going to come back at least forward wise this year and be a lot better. So. That's my consensus. What do you guys think, Vegas fans or otherwise? Uh, what would you give for your teams for at forward? Uh, for Vegas, we also had a B. Um, and that's just simply because of the center position. Uh, picking, up, uh, picking up Nolan Patrick's a big question mark. He didn't play well in Philadelphia last year. Brad Howden kept on getting less and less and less minutes for the Rangers. I actually did give them a B as well, but only for that reason. Um, I'm not big on the Dodonoff move. I He really did bad in Ottawa, but I love Stone and I love Pacioretty. And Chandler Stevenson does work well between them. He gets back as that speedy forward that gets back for both of them who don't skate overly that well. Um and then, you know, you have the fast line of William Marshall, Carlson, and the great two-way winger and Smith. So it's interesting. It's an interesting lineup, but I gave it a B, and most people gave them a B as well. Next, we had the Washington Capitals, and I'm going to have to look at the Winnipeg Jets here in a second, but uh, the Washington Capitals got a C plus. Um, I rated him a B, actually, but I understand the C-plus. It's just the team is getting older. A lot of people are seeing decline here. I don't think it's going to be that much of a decline. I mean, Backstrom had 53 points last year. He's only 33 yet. Ovechkin is ageless. Um, Oshie played really well, even though he's 34. I do question whether Manta is what Detroit thinks he is and not what Washington thinks it is. He is where he's very inconsistent. Big question mark about Kuzi. He won't be there. Who are you going to put in that second line center spot? So it starts to fall apart a little bit depth wise because of things like that. And I think that's where the C plus comes from. Tell me, Washington fans, what do you think of that? Uh, it's the C plus there for. The, your for your team. From what I've t- heard about with Washington fans, that seems about the consensus, actually. Uh, they're not too happy with where they're heading now, uh, knowing that 
they're just really getting old and all that. The Jets also got a C plus. Um, I had him as a B plus. I just love Shifley. I still think Connor, Kyle Connor, Matt, come on. But a lot of teams, a lot of guys in the live, my live stream, had him lower, and I'm not really sure why. They're very knowledgeable guys. Uh, maybe it's because Dubois didn't do very well. Maybe it's the leftover from the shellacking they took to Montreal. Um, but I like this forward lineup. I think Cop Lowry. It's gonna be. It looks like it's gonna be Veselainen. Uh, maybe the loss of Appleton. That is big. Like Appleton was fantastic. But Ehlers is going to be a beast this year. Connor is probably going to even up his goal production. Could even be a 40 to 50 goal scorer. Um, Harkins, Nash, Taninato, maybe a little lower. But a C-plus seems low to me. What do you guys think out there in Jets land or anybody else? What do you give your uh, ranking for your team? And that's my full 42, and I went long here. So I'm just going to take off with a little, wait a sec, little Perlo dance away to you. Come over to my live and do this. We're going to be doing defensemen next. Okay, bye.